Welcome back. My name is Nick and I have Kyle here with me, Peckles with the Zero on Instagram, and we've been covering his dark materials from Land of the Dead breakdown to the Harpies breakdown to Father Gomez breakdown, and now we're going to be doing John Perry. Oh my gosh, there's so much to cover here. We're going to break it down the best we can. Please comment below things we missed or things we got right, whatever you want to, mostly positive, hopefully, and now we're going to jump into it. Oh, by the way, if you're a fan of the Gal of Vespians from the book with the dragonflies, please go to azart.space to get the, our dragonfly shirt. Kyle here does all the artwork. He's Mr. Talented, and we love Gal of Vespians, as you one, can tell. One of the Mr. Talented's and, and Miss Talented's. <laughs> oh, that's true. Channel. Very so, true. All yes. right. I love that. Yes, Thank you for the correction. Let's give a shout out to other creatives. You know? Yes. <laughs> okay. You ready to jump in? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. I could have, like, there's actually a lot of information on, on characters. Um, John Perry, yeah. actually, like I was surprised. There's actually quite a bit of peripheral information once you sift through it all. But like, and this is mostly book stuff. It is. So this is yeah, mostly perfect. about book stuff, right? Perfect. All, we're, we're trying to catch all the stuff that maybe the show didn't necessarily talk about. Yes. So um, about John Perry. All right. So so he is, of course, the father of Will. Yes. Right, he he mysterious he, he disappeared mysteriously uh, mm -hmm. when he was a babe, um, a wee babe, and uh, so so life in uh, so like a little bit of his biography, life in his own world, right? Yep, is he was a member of the Boy Scouts when he was younger. Oh, uh -huh. fancy that! Shout out to the to the Boy Scouts. I have it's a little bit myself, of so I'm like for. Hey, hey, hey foreshadowing of his marine ventures but go on yes 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 and then uh, he had a which he had a successful career in the royal marines as part of the 49th commando so yep. and he served for 14 years um and then uh later he he left uh to become an explorer mm. uh, and uh, so um he also um during that time he mar he he got married to elaine perry um mm. and had a son named will i'm sure he probably well. won't amount to anything um <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so so the next beat of his life is uh, revolves around the um, Nuneatak dig. So this is in the mm. north. This is in Alaska. So in 1985, uh, Perry set off on um, the uh, the Nuneatak dig expedition to Alaska. So that expedition's aim was to survey an area of for like evidence of early human settlements right mm -hmm. um but perry was also in search of an anomaly that was rumored to be in the area so um and of course there was someone else on his team um a physicist by the name of nelson who was also interested so they were kind of like paired up mm -hmm. um so on the way he met an uh, alaska native named matt gigalik and uh, gave him, and 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 uh, Matt gave him an exact location for the anomaly. So six mm. weeks after their departure, the party arrived at the North American Arctic Survey Station in uh, Noatak. And two months later, there was a blizzard in which some of the party got lost. So, you know, while searching for them, uh, Perry and two others accidentally went through the anomaly window into mm. the world of Sitagazi. And uh, his two companions were killed by specters shortly after, as one does when you're in Chittagazi. Um And uh, essentially, it, back in our world, the Times reported that uh, there had been a no reply to signal sent to the survey station, um, and that Perry and the party were presumed missing. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. And then, you know, life in Lyra's world. Um, so while in Chittagazi. Uh, he found another anomaly window into Lyra's world located near a place called Prudhoe Bay. Mm. And so he traveled across the northern lands and learned from, you know, like the peoples of the Arctic and stuff. And uh, he even uh, visited uh, Bear Rock. I have no idea how that's prominent. I don't even remember it from the books, but apparently he visited it and it was cool. <laughs> Uh, it, was, it was worth mentioning. Um, and so he, he then met um, uh, the Yenisei uh, shaman, Ivan Kasio, Kasimovich Tichlin. Tilchin. There we go. Tilchin. Um, who taught him about the spirit world. Woo. So actually, this <laughs> was how he met his demon, uh, Sayan Kotor. So um, who, his demon didn't appear as soon as he went through the hole. No. No. So, so, 
So basically, he got this this uh, this shamanic training from 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 Ivan. He taught him about the spirit world, and he was able to once he went in there, he then mm. met Cyan Kotor, um, who was the form of an, of an osprey. Mm. Right? Um, and so, under the name of Stanislaus Grumman, he traveled through Europe. Right. So, um, you know, he began his scientific studies in Warsaw. Um, and around like 1988 or 89, he made a name for himself with his paper on the variations of the mag- in the magnetic pole. So with his new like credentials and stuff, he like continued his studies. Um, at some point, he studied at Jordan College in Oxford. Oh, a little bit of mm. little bit of intersectionality there of, of yeah. location. Um, and then in London, he realized that he found it you know difficult to live in a place so familiar yet so different. Mm. Um, and and he decided to return to the north where he. Like felt more at home, um, and uh, that's kind of where the story almost catches up, right? Almost. So, yeah. so I'm getting there. I'll I'll tell you when we're approaching. Um, <laughs> so he he joined the the um, the Yenisei um, uh, uh, Pactars and underwent trepanning, and and uh, shortly after he eventually went into shamanic training mm. um, and became a shaman. And then uh, Perry later, and then of course later, he would turn down the love of the witch Jutakamainen, which would mm, um, pay negatively in dividends <laughs> later. Yeah. Um, so now, this, now we're demise. leading up to the to his appearance in the books, but this is a yes. little bit of the events before. So after becoming shaman, he met Lord Asriel. So he told Asriel about the Alaska window. Mm. Right, so he made him aware of it, and then Azrael also told Perry about his plan to lead a rebellion against the authority. Mm. Right? So at some point, he cured a. He, okay, so, so this is also another crazy part. I didn't know this. Like, so at some point, he cured a wound of Giacomo Paradisi's with his blood moss ointment that he developed, which later on goes to Will. Correct. Yes. So because Perry knew about the world windows and per- Paradisi decided to confide in in him about the subtle knife. That's how he knows about mm. it. And he knows about the knife bearer. Right. Oh, because really? Giacomo Paradisi himself told him about that. Oh, wow. um, and so Perry immediately like knew he's like, like, this is this is what I, I need to bring Asriel and this knife together. Mm. Right. Um, And so basically, um, and then this is the event that we first kind of get a sense of him in the story that I'll stop with is Mm -hmm. basically after that, Perry summons Lee Scoresby to him using Lee Scoresby's mother's ring. Mm. And boom, there, that's when we're, yeah. And I believe that's also when the angels, Balthamos and Baruch start following him. Creeps. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, (laughs) he's, yeah, (laughs) those, those voyeuristic angels, um, Uh you know, so. So, and yeah, that's all backstory we don't get really in the in the show at all. Yeah, we kind of get a little bit of talking with him and Lee Scorsby in season two, but it's very mysterious who he is. Yeah, and then um, you know, just just some other stuff about him. So, like his physical appearance in the books. So, so he's described mm. as having like blazing blue eyes, a uh, uh, a stubborn jawline, mm. and dark hair streaked with gray, which is mm. pretty close to you know kind of what they had in the in, 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 the, in show. the show. Mm-hmm. Um, Although I forget what color his eyes are. Mm. Probably brown. Probably brown. Um, so, um, and then um, uh, he also has abilities, right? So mm-hmm. he is... He, yes, he does. He has the the power of shamanism. Um, Which is very vague and very much like the force at yes, times. Yes, <laughs> yes. Though, I mean, there's some... I, you, you know, yeah, they definitely like... I think <laughs> Philip Pullman kind of generalized shamanic, but, you know. But, like, basically, he can enter a trance and travel in spirit. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty cool. And then he has the power to control weather um, and bring down, you know, like bringing on like both mm-hmm. like winds. Which and we storms. saw when he was with Lee. Yes. So now n- now this ties in to um, to the birds part. So I so I, oh. I had forgotten about this part from the book. But um, you know how the birds in the show like just he, he you know, he summons the birds himself. Yeah. That's actually a power of his demon. Oh, of, cool. Of Cyan Kotor. So so like a. Uh, and I just love so this shamans. Quote. Demons have powers, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, they're like, so like, they're like it's, it's interesting because it's like a witch's demon almost. Oh, right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so, um, so, and I, and I, and I love this quote. It's this is from the books, and they also got most of it in the show too. So, mm. like, people here cannot conceive of worlds where demons are a silent voice in the mind and no, and no more. 
Can you imagine my astonishment in turn at learning that part of my own nature was female and bird formed and beautiful? And so that's just him like regarding his like learning yep. that about himself through with his demon. Um, and uh, so his demon is fiercely protective of John and often wary of mm. others. So like yeah. when he and also when she speaks, she only does it to John, which uh, mm. like is most unlike other demons and their humans. Yeah. Like um, Pan. and then Pan, Pan's like our our general guideline for what <laughs> 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 He's the barometer for normal. Um, and then so, the extreme would be the golden monkey. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, and then uh, Cyan Kotor also, um, she she has a regal authority over others as uh, she she has the ability to command a flock of birds mm. into attacking one of the Zeppelins. Because oh, yeah. of mm-hmm. this, um, she was called, like, uh, remember, Lee Scoresby called her Eagle Queen. Yeah, uh, because of this power, um, and uh, she had the ability to fly great distances away from John, very similar to how witches' demons do. Yes. So yeah, huge, huge backstory basically, mm-hmm. and just the character development. And then what we know is like he plays such a huge role for the end too. We only get like little glimpses of him in the second book, very, very sparse. Yeah. You know, we get stuff here and there. He dies just like he does in the show right when he connects with Will. But it's different because in the book, he's actually wrestling with Will. He doesn't know yeah. really kind of what's going on. And then once he realizes, that's when the witch comes down and kills him. And he really doesn't get to interact with his father. But that's when he gets his jacket and yep. the ointment. It's and it, the actually angels. that's that's actually very poetic and really cool, like a cross section of like um, the hero's journey, because yeah. his as his hero's journey is ending. It's transferred to his son, right? Mm-hmm. Which is he is essentially his own son's call to the next step in the yeah. adventure, right? And yep. like he he's able to don his his like coat and stuff to show transformation and like yep. carrying a part of. It. I'm like that's sick, you know. It's so that's very cool. that's a really cool element. And also cool too because he didn't know Will was the knife bear, right? Which is yeah. really cool for him to like to his son to play such a big role, yeah, in this you know for that part and. Pretty much from there, we don't see him until the land of the dead. Mm-hmm. And in the land of the dead, I guess he's projecting out and because he knows what's going on outside the land of the yeah. dead. <laughs> That's why his powers are like so like, how does this guy know so much info? But apparently he kind of knew what was going on. I don't know if he was following them. or I would suspect that because of his shamanic powers, because remember, a lot of his shamanic powers deal with spirit. Yeah. And in a way, they are people in the land of the dead at least the people in it, not in the suburbs that are waiting yeah. but in the in the land they are spirits yep mm-hmm. so he's a he maybe has a little bit of that leftover zhuzh you know yeah that I, i'm assuming that because yeah. he knew exactly where to go and what to do and like hold back we're gonna you know we might have a chance of fighting the specters and stuff like that because yeah. he plays a huge role in one telling will and lyra the 10-year rule basically of being within worlds yeah, huge, a huge impact at the end of the story. Two, he gets the land of the the army of the dead, or the army of the dead, the, the people <laughs> of the land of the dead, to fight the specters, basically. Right. Which is which shifts the tide of the war for Lord Azrael, right. because actually for Will and Lyra too, their safety is more guaranteed at that point because they're almost starting to see specters while they're running around on the on the battlefield. Remember that they start to see glimpses because they're coming of age right. sooner so they can kind of almost see the specters and stuff like that. And then basically from there, he poofs into dust and we don't see him anymore. Yep. He becomes one with the universe. Yeah. Oh, and he does get to meet up with Will and talk to him a little bit, which is still a bummer too because like Will, you know, he feels like he lost his chance. He goes to the land of the dead to like, you know, have this in-depth conversation with his dad and stuff and it's so short. It really is very short. Yeah. And, it, and it's just... And, and it's, it's, and tough, it's and skipped entirely in the in the show. Pretty much. There's like one like, like there's, pull, yeah. pull, pull aside moment, but... And it, it was... Ah, it's so tough too because like in the book they can't physically hug people in the land of the dead That's, and it's yeah. like <laughs> it's just like how tough that must have been for both of them that they couldn't actually physically touch i know in the show they could touch and you can have touching moments and stuff like yeah. that but i don't know if it's supposed to be bad like that i anyway. mean it, it, it definitely i mean in the book it, it adds to the the sense of loss and like the the yeah. sadness about it because like Will desperately wants wanted to connect with his father and like wanted to know so who he badly. was, and now he can no longer physically like t- touch mm. touch him, right? So yeah, 
And it's also cool too in the book. There's a moment where before Lyra even meets Will's dad, she knows it's Will's dad because she's like she recognizes the same features and mm-hmm. like the the jutting jaw or like you know she recognizes he's like that looks like an older Will kind of thing. And she yeah. like it was like a cool moment for her. And also I guess it, it's also cool for her too because maybe when she envisions Will in their separate lives, that's what she can picture how Will looked growing older and vice versa for Will with Mrs. Coulter. Because right. remember, there was even things with him and Mrs. Coulter where he's like, oh, I can see little things like Lyra would do. Or, you know what I mean? Like he kind of saw some things and he was almost like mesmerized by Mrs. Coulter at times too. So Yeah. Actually, we'll get into that in our next <laughs> Yeah, because we're doing video. a Mrs. Coulter breakdown yeah. and we're also be doing a lot of other characters. We already have Father Gomez. Uh, please comment down below more stuff because we're looking at comments to do more deep dives on certain videos. We're trying to figure that all out, trying to put our brains together to come up with the best videos possible. Trying to um, smoosh them together. Obviously, we're you know. probably going to miss things and slip on things. So feel free to point it out in the comments down below what we got right, what we got wrong. And by the way, go to Instagram to follow Kyle Pecos of the Zero on Instagram. He's a super talented artist. He does all the cool shirt designs too. So if you go to azar.space, you can get our cool dragonfly shirt. And he does tons of other stuff for us and on his own channel too. Go over there, say hi, give him a follow. And we'll see you on the next Azart. Woo! John Perry, Will Perry, the Perry Boys. John Perry, the Perry, the Perry Boys. A mystery novel.